Several demonstrations in Panama are underway in the midst of negotiations with the national government. In Brazil, President Jair Bolsonaro once again attacked the country's electoral system as he questioned without evidence an alleged vulnerability on the electronic ballot boxes. The Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, dismissed more than 60 officials from the intelligence agencies and the prosecutor's office for allegedly working against the government. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. Several demonstrations in Panama are underway in the midst of negotiations with the national government. Leaders of the conglomerate Alianza Pueblo Unido por la Vida stated that the pressure measure demands from the government the setting up of a single dialogue table with all the sectors and the actors who are still in the streets demanding social justice. In the midst of these demands, several roads in the capital region were closed as part of the protests, which, according to some spokespersons, will continue. In the last day, the Executive and the National Alliance for the Rights of the Organized People, ANADEPO, had agreed to lower the price of a gallon of the fuel to $3.25, an agreement that had been rejected by the organization. In 68 years of life, I am tired of seeing governments that make their promises, that go up, steal, go down, the next one goes up, they steal, and he will lack everything, medicine, education, food, and our inequality has no name. The rise in the price of medicines, the basic food basket, which is very high, our economic situation, we have problems with large payrolls, undebtedness, several factors for the perfect storm that is happening in Panama. People are fed up and have taken to the streets to demonstrate for things to change. In Panama, the president of Anadepo, Luis Sanchez, asked the agreements reached to be broadcast live. We also want to tell the Panamanian people that any discussion that takes place at this table, we want to ask the Ombudsman's Office to broadcast live so that the people can see what is being discussed here. Because no one here, no comrade, has sold out, much less comrade Alexis Carzona who is spokesman together with myself. We have not sold out because we will never turn our back on the country. And the leader of Anadepo, Luis Sanchez, also made a statement regarding the government's failure to hold different dialogue roundtables in different parts of the country. Must first respect this problem of having tables in San Felix, tables in Panama, tables in Santiago, tables everywhere. This is a joke. On the last day, the Convergencia de Sindical, the union's convergence uh, organization, demanded that the government set up a single dialogue table. We call on the government, which we hold responsible for the different confusions that have been generated as a result of this situation, to set up a single table with all the forces that have been struggling during this week. The Pueblo Unido Alliance has specified its proposals in seven priority points that have to do with the fuel hike medications, the high cost of living, the general increase in salaries, 6% for education, and also the cancellation of some dialogues that do not contemplate the participation of the actors in struggle, and finally with a follow-up table for all the issues that remain to be resolved. In Honduras, the National Congress met to redefine the procedure for electing members of the Supreme Court of Justice. Members of the Congress tried to reach a consensus to elect the judges in a proper manner. The legislative branch of the Honduran government has been criticized for irregularities in previous processes, where non-competent people were elected to occupy positions in the Supreme Court. There were also evidence of corruption, impunity, and a lack of access to justice. Historically, judges have been appointed for political reasons. Therefore, the Congress aims to perform an open process on the basis of prescribed criteria based on merit and integrity. In Colombia, the death of one person is reported while 13 others were injured in a motorbike bomb attack at the Department of Cauca. 
The attack, attributed in principle to FARC dissidents, mm -hmm. took place on Sunday at about 11.30 p.m. in the municipality of El Bordo, the head of the municipality of Patilla in Cauca. The detonation affected at least six houses and several commercial establishments close to the town center of this municipality in the department of Cauca. According to preliminary information, the victim was a civilian, while among the wounded there were three police officers. In the meantime, this Monday, an extraordinary security council will be held to analyze this and other acts of violence. In Peru, Prime Minister Aníbal Torres proposed holding a referendum in which the citizens will be asked whether they are in favor of calling a constituent assembly to draft a new constitution. The Prime Minister proposed the idea that together with the consultation on the return to bicameralism, the citizens should be asked whether they want the constitution to be changed by means of a constituent assembly. It should be remembered that one of the campaign promises made by President Pedro Castillo, including changing the constitution, considering that the current constitution is neoliberal in economic terms. Venezuela and the world celebrates the extraordinary athlete Julimar Rojas, who made history on Monday by becoming the first to win three World Triple Jump titles. Rojas, 26, won gold at the 2022 World Championships in Athletics in Eugene, in Oregon, the U.S., with a record of 15.47 meters. The Venezuelan athlete achieved this mark, the best of the season, in her second jump in front of some 10,000 fans at the Hayward Field Stadium. She clearly beat Jamaican Shanika Ricketts, who took silver with 14.89 meters, and the U.S. Tori Franklin, the bronzy, with 14.72 meters. In fourth place, with a jump of 14.70 meters, was the Cuban athlete Leianis Perez. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. The National Network for the Defense of Human Rights reports that the death toll in Haiti has risen to 300 as a result of armed violence between gangs. The organization detailed that about 160 people have been wounded at the moment, most of the victims being civilians. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights recently denounced that this situation affects the most vulnerable population of the city of Port-au-Prince. According to the international organization, 934 murders and 680 kidnappings have been reported from January to June 2022, which certifies the increase of human rights violations against the local population. In Brazil, President Jair Bolsonaro once again attacked the country's electoral system. In a meeting with ambassadors in Brasilia, he questioned without evidence an alleged vulnerability of the electronic ballot boxes. The president has criticized the electronic voting system, arguing that it will be used against him in the upcoming presidential elections. Bolsonaro claimed that there was fraud in the 2014 and 2018 elections when he was elected president, stating that he should have been declared the winner in the first round. The opposition and some analysts believe this is part of a strategy to ignore an eventual defeat and hinder the electoral process, given the polls that positioned former president Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva with a wide lead in the voting intention. Global inflation, the highest in decades as a result of the economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic and the conflict in Ukraine, puts pressure on businesses in Argentina. Global inflation is hitting the Latin American country, the third largest economy in the region, at a moment when the country has been suffering from spiraling inflation and fears of a sharp devaluation of the peso and the political turmoil. Last week's inflation spike has raised wider questions about Argentina's economy and whether the country can honor the agreement with the International Monetary Fund over repayment of its $44 billion debt.
In the United Kingdom, a majority of members of parliament gave a vote of confidence to the cabinet headed by Prime Minister Boris Johnson. According to the results of the vote, a total of 349 MPs voted in favor of giving their vote of confidence to Johnson's government, while 238 voted against. The British Premier announced on July 7th the decision to step down amid a new scandal that triggered several resignations in his cabinet. The Labour Party tried to introduce a motion of censure against Johnson's government, but the Conservatives blocked this attempt on July 12th. Until there is a replacement, Boris Johnson will remain in the office. And the European Commission announced on Monday the purchase of 54,530 additional doses of monkeypox vaccines. Concerned about a nearly 50% increase in cases in the European Union in a week. The European executive said in a press release that with this news purchase, the number of doses acquired for the block from the Danish laboratory Bavarian Nordic amounts to 163,620. According to figures from the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, Europe is the most affected region in the world by monkeypox with more than 7,000 confirmed cases as of July 14th. Known in humans since 1970, this disease is considered much less dangerous and contagious than smallpox, which was eradicated in 1980. It manifests with flu-like symptoms and skin rashes and usually clears up on its own after two, three weeks. Now we move on to other topics. The Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, dismissed more than 60 officials from intelligence agencies and the prosecutor's office for allegedly working against the government. Zelensky detailed that 651 legal cases have been opened for treason. At the same time, he announced in a couple of presidential decrees that the general prosecutor, Irina Vedenkidova, and the head of the intelligence, Ivan Bakhanov, were removed from their posts. In this regard, the Ukrainian president denounced that the now former head of intelligence, who was his representative when he was a comedian, for having allowed a series of calamities and mass desertions since the beginning of the Russian special military operation in the country. And the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, said it is impossible to cut his nation off from the rest of the world and that the sanctions imposed by the Western countries will not turn the clock back on the country's development. Since the beginning of the special military operation in Ukraine on February 24th, Russia has been hit with several packages of Western sanctions designed to isolate it from the global economy that have deprived it of access to goods including commercial, electronics, semiconductors and aircraft parts. At a meeting of the Council for Strategic Development and the National Projects, the head of state reaffirmed that Russia will neither give up nor resist in its development. And we have more news coming up after a final short break. So stay with us. Welcome back. Palestinians living in Syria, together with their Syrian brothers, commemorated on Monday, July 18th, the first anniversary of the physical loss of the founder of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Ahmad Jibril. They also took the opportunity to express their rejection of the recently concluded visit to the Middle East by the United States President Joe Biden. From Damascus, our correspondent Hisham Wanas with the details. The participants in the event pledged to carry on Ahmad Jibril's banner of struggle and resistance until the liberation of Palestine, a position that embodies their firm rejection of the joint declaration of the U.S.-Israeli Strategic Partnership of Jerusalem 
sealed last week between Washington and Tel Aviv during U.S. President Joe Biden's recent tour of the region. We are confident that we will achieve victory, for we don't renounce our principles of struggle for liberation and therefore we ratify our rejection of the so-called Jerusalem Declaration. We affirm that this declaration is worthless and will be destroyed in the face of our will and our determination to sacrifice our lives in defense of our just cause. The Jerusalem Declaration signed by Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister constitutes a new chapter in the conspiracy against the Palestinian cause. But the will of our people and our Arab nation will thwart this new conspiracy, just as it thwarted the plan of the so-called New Middle East. Those gathered at the meeting denounced that the so-called Jerusalem Declaration, in addition to ratifying the unconditional U.S. support for Israel, calls for the creation of an alliance in the region led by the Israeli entity against Iran and the other members of the Axis of Resistance, a plan that they call to confront with the creation of an integral Arab front against normalization and the ambitions of imperialism. We warn against using force against the resistance bloc, as this could blow up the whole region, because Iran is not alone and has the support of all the resistance forces in the region, who act together as one chain and will never allow the enemies to isolate any members of the resistance axis. Ahmad Jabril was one of the oldest and most prominent Palestinian military leaders, a figure whose loss, though regrettable, does not mean the end of his career of tireless struggle in defense of the just Palestinian cause. This is demonstrated by the Palestinians and their Syrian brothers as they pay tribute to his memory with a strong statement rejecting the Zionist U.S. plans against the region. Thank you, Hicham, for this report, and now we move on to other stories. In Pakistan, at least 20 people died and another 30 are missing after a boat carrying more than 100 people, all of them relatives from the same family, capsized while crossing the Indus River on Monday. The overloaded boat was heading to a wedding ceremony between the villages of Mashka and Karar when it capsized in the Indus River on the district of Sadi Kebab, the Punjab province, according to police and the local authorities. Nearly 90 people were rescued by divers while officers retrieved 20 bodies. So far, authorities estimate there are 30 missing people, but the exact number of passengers is unknown. Most of the dead are women from the same clan because in Pakistan, women don't learn how to swim, and it is considered inappropriate for them. India's parliament began voting on Monday to elect the country's president, with a woman from marginal minority as the favorite. 64-year-old Draupadi Murmu from the Santal ethnic community was a candidate for the Brataviya Janata Party, the Indian People's Party. If elected, Murmu will become the first tribal woman to hold the post and only the second in the country's history to be head of state. India's president is elected for a five-year term, nearly 5,000 legislators in the two houses of parliament and the regional legislative assemblies. The result of the election will be announced during the week. Telesur English continues to grow. Its signal now reaches Europe. You can order it from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on screen are in place since July 1st. Quite soon, further changes will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now, more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other farther away nations. This news multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But before our farewells, we would like to introduce a song written by Paulo Gomes, a former who lives near the city where the Brazil's former president Lula da Silva was born. Remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And join us on our socials. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, as always, I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching. Você presta atenção.
Quero viver minha vida em paz, sem ter com quem me preocupar. Se você fosse preocupar com tudo que se passa no Brasil, você vai acabar louco no asilo. Porque ninguém liga pra ninguém, é trabalhador, sendo um refém, é vereador, roubando deputado, é corrupção pra todo lado. Lula dá um jeito no nosso Brasil, Lula dá um jeito no nosso Brasil, Lula dá um jeito no nosso Brasil, Lula dá um jeito. Nos faróis das ruas você vê Crianças estendendo as mãos E os velhinhos de carrinho Catando papelão Os de alta classe vê lá de cima De avião E não tem nem aí com nossa nação